a very kind human being called Sasha William uh, gave me a list of StarCraft II chronological cinematics and I've decided that today, every Wednesday from here on out, I will be reacting to this list uh, of cinematics. And the first one is under StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. Jim Rayner is the central hero and character of the campaign, which focuses on his fight against the Terran Dominion, as well as his relationship with Sarah Kerrigan. Now, I've already um, piled or compiled at least eight of them for today, and then next week it will continue on as uh, different parts. So this is part one, next week will be part two. Okay, let's start. Three. Two, one. Yeah, I remember watching this cinematic um, 
during my first uh, reactions to StarCraft, StarCraft 2, uh, if you want to check out that video, I'll put the card right up here. Just click on it. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering, the, you know, human beings or Terrans as they call them. Yeah, I think they call them Terrans. Yeah, Terrans, specifically the ones that wear this armor. Are they superhuman or are they just normal, regular human beings? And then they just, you know, put on this armor. Because um, I, I'm assuming that this is Jim Reiner. Jim Reiner looks huge. Um, <laughs> he looks like a big guy, like really, he's huge. So I'm just wondering, is this armor, you know, just another added benefit to them being genetically enhanced human beings? You know, like how um, the, the, the Astartes from Warhammer 40k, they're also enhanced human beings. And then they also wear on their armor. So I'm wondering whether it's kind of like the same way like this with um, StarCraft soldiers. I'm, I'm not sure what they're called. Uh, these space warriors, you know, <laughs> in the comment section, you guys can tell me what 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 are the designation for these men and women who wear this armor? Um, yeah, okay, let's continue. Make no mistake, war is coming with all its glory and all its horror. Okay, okay, <laughs> let's continue. This is Kerrigan. There's a wave of Zerg advancing on this position. We need immediate evac. What happened to Kerrigan wasn't your fault. doesn't factor into this. Our revolution's about freedom. When you figure it out, let us know. We're waiting on you. <laughs> Sir, Dominion ships warping in. Sweet mother of mercy. About time we kick this revolution into overdrive. Feels like old times already. <laughs> the answers you seek lie within. Jim Rayner represents a clear and present threat to this dominion. Prince Valeria, we have Zerg attack waves incoming. I can offer you what you've always wanted. If the Zerg wipe everyone out, it's all been for nothing. Stand your ground! So I'm going back to Char. To get the job done. Now that's the commander I've been waiting on. Because the one thing I know... Some things are just worth fighting for. Okay, I, I like that song. I, I've heard that song before. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I was kind of lost into it. Um, all right, the, 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 the Terrans, the humans. Um, the, the government structure, is it like a monarchy? 
because I hear names of princes and dukes and other kind of stuff there. So I'm just wondering, uh, are humans, you know, the human government, is it controlled by a, a sovereign king? You know, like, is it like royalty? Is it, uh, um, what, what do they call it? A monarchy, yes. Is it, is it a monarchy system that rules over the human beings? And uh, Ray, Jim, Jim Rayner is rebelling against the, the, the dominion, the Terran dominion, right? So what is he rebelling for? Is he rebelling because they betrayed uh, the woman he loves? Uh, what's her name again? Sarah, Sarah Kerrigan. Yeah. And Sarah Kerrigan is the queen of blades, right? And yeah, it looks like she was betrayed there and there was some um, swarm or what are they called? Zerg. Yeah, the Zerg was swarming around her and probably they're going to choose her right there, you know, and take her away so she so she could become the, the Queen of Blades. So, yeah, I, I think I think I understand what's going on. Maybe. If I'm wrong, <laughs> please point it out for me. Uh, but, yeah, okay. Um, but there was another guy with a suit, with that um, space suit. So I'm not sure if that was Jim Rayner or is Jim Rayner the guy with the uh, uh, sheriff... Uh, badge and yeah I I'm confused I'm confused there I'm not sure who is Jim Reyna there between all the men that I've seen there yeah <laughs> I'll figure it out let's continue StarCraft II single-player campaign puts you right in the middle of a war-torn universe. Using clever new gameplay mechanics, the game storyline takes you round all sorts of battlefields, full of hard-pounding combat and impressive cinematics. With a mix of both old-school units and newcomers at your side, there is a whole lot of ways to achieve victory. Wings of Liberty, the first chapter of the StarCraft II trilogy, continues the story of good old Jimmy Rayner, still looking to be the people's hero after all these years. Now he's a man with nothing to lose, trying like a fool to hide from the ghosts of his past. But fate's got other plans for Rayner. And soon, he finds himself heading down the road to revenge, justice, and if he's lucky, maybe a little salvation. Rainer's HQ is the Hyperion, an aging battlecruiser he liberated during the events of the original StarCraft. After boarding this hunk of Neo Steel, you'll meet Jimmy's band of rebels and be able to choose from a wide selection of missions. Now keep in mind that what you do in this campaign carries a lot of weight and can change characters and worlds alike. To get through your missions in one piece, you gotta take advantage of the Hyperion systems to spruce up your army. These systems include the option to spend some of your hard-earned credits on upgrades that'll turn your ragtag troops into a respectable fighting force. If you play your cards right, you just might get your hands on some stunning Protoss and Zerg tech capable of changing your army in ways you could never imagine. The Hyperion also gives you access to some good old-fashioned hide guns. If you shell out the credits, these battle-hardened mercenaries will join your side. In StarCraft II, Wings of Liberty, lives throughout this crazy corner of the galaxy are riding on the choices you make. So pick your allies carefully. Train your troops as you see fit and fight for the future of the StarCraft universe. Alright, it's a real-time strategy game, right? 
uh, the Hyperion. Uh, that's Jim Jim Reiner's ship that he acquired <laughs> that he acquired from the Terran Dominion. Um, him and his rebels. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out: Are they trying to rebel, like to overthrow the kingdom, or are they just rebelling in a specific part or sector of of the galaxy that they want to, you know, cut out independently for their own people or something? I'm I'm still not sure what is the end result of this rebellion against uh, the Terran Dominion. But yeah, okay. The Hyperion, his ship. Okay. Let's continue. And in other news today, Emperor Arcturus Manx held a press conference commemorating the end of the so-called Brood War some four years ago. Our own Kate Lockwell was on the scene. Emperor, the threat of a new Zerg invasion is still very real. But instead of expanding our fleets, you've squandered trillions on hunting down has-been rebels like Jim Rayner. Jim Rayner represents a clear and present threat to this dominion. He is an unscrupulous, lawless revolutionary bent on spreading fear and dissension across the sector. He and his ragtag band of miscreants have instigated open rebellion across six separate worlds. And so we got Forces are prepared and awaiting your orders, Commander. Uploading tactical data now. Good. About time we kick this revolution into overdrive.
Okay, okay, I, now I understand. Now I understand. So the guy that we saw in the first cinematic, you know, the one that was being cladded with the armor, that's Tigers. And this guy who is drinking and smoking, uh, that's uh, Jim Rayner. Because I was a bit confused before, like, who is Rayner? Uh, not Rayner, man. Who is, um, yeah, Rayner, Jim Rayner. And who is that other guy that I saw? Uh, in the beginning but now i know this is tigers and and and, and jim reina on the other side okay all right okay <laughs> let me not forget this um yeah the emperor is focused on getting jim uh reina no matter the cost even if the the swarm or should i say the zerg are invading their territories uh, capturing the planets, the, the emperor is focused squarely on, on Jim, and I guess that might become a very, you know, serious situation for the emperor in down the, further down the line because the people are gonna be you know, asking themselves like why is this guy our emperor if he's not protecting us and all that all, all those types of questions, um, but yeah, it seems that Jim Rayner really. Um, got on the wrong side of the emperor and the emperor's taking this very personally and yeah let's continue damn jimmy you've been holding out on me cutting it pretty close there matt never left you hanging before sir fair enough just get us the hell out of here. All batteries, concentrate forward firepower. Spin up drives two and six. All hands brace for warp jump on my mark. Mark. seen the Zerg in years. Why attack Marsara now? It's not just Marsara. You need to see this. Zerg swarm launched a full-scale attack. Devastation spread throughout all outer rim planets. Sustained heavy losses. Casualties in the billions. Minutes ago, the Zerg attacked a Dominion military research facility. Okay, what job is he coming back to finish? Um, the Queen of Blades, and uh, the news, the news uh, reporter who just died in that explosion—that was crazy. That was—I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. That was yo, oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. And yeah, maybe the emperor doesn't care because it's the outer colonies, and it's none of his concern. But until the Zerg start invading the inner colonies, if there's such a thing and probably even the capital i'm not sure what the capital of the terran dominion is but you know once um the queen of blades with her zerg uh, continue to invade further deeper inside the territories of the terran dominion maybe he will take this seriously uh but i mean billions are already dead and the emperor is nowhere to be found with his fleets and his armies and yeah i mean this this is what sows the seeds of rebellion you know against um the, the the governing structure of an empire you know if the government doesn't respond to the situations on the ground so yeah i guess maybe jim reyna has it he's gonna have it on his side like in terms of the people and the planets, they're going to, you know, declare themselves independent from the Empire. 
and they're going to join his forces. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just talking. <laughs> Let's just continue. That's funny, convict. I don't recall giving you access to our database. Just keeping up on current events, Captain. Seems this Queen of Blades got everybody running scared. <laughs> she don't look so tough. You have no idea who she is, do you, Tychus? Don't matter to me, none. Well, it matters to Jim. They were close once. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're telling me they were shacked up? Apparently she was something else. Before the Zerg took her. Turned her into that. Jimmy feels responsible. Honestly, if we have to face her again, I don't know what he'll do. Woman like that, there's only one thing to do. Okay, guys, that was part one of the StarCraft II cinematic. Uh, chronological list and yeah I'm wondering who is the second in command of the Hyperion the EXO I didn't get his name um, but he seems to be very proficient in his work uh, I like how he's like <laughs> prepare to jump on my mark <laughs> that was cool that was cool um, yeah the different factions the well we didn't check we didn't hear about the the, the Protoss we didn't hear about that faction yet, but the Zerg, the Human Dominion, they're having their own internal squabbles with Jim, uh, Jim Rena and Ty. What's his name again? Yeah, Tigus is looking for artifacts. Um, the Queen of Blades is attacking the outer colonies, looking for something. Probably the same artifact that Tigus is looking for. I, I want to bet my money they're, they're related somehow there, but yeah. There's a lot of um, fighting happening everywhere. Uh, either it's rebellions or it's this invasion by the by the Zerg into the outer colonies. And the Emperor himself, he is fixated with this rebellion uh, instead of dealing with the far greater threat, which I would say is the Zerg. But yeah, we'll see how everything turns out in part two. Um, guys, I hope to see you there for part two. Uh, sorry that I was talking a lot, um, blurting out a lot of nonsense. It's just that that's what I do sometimes, you know, when I don't know what's going on, I try to uh, theorize and, and brainstorm about what's going on between these factions and, you know, everything in between. So that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to uh, both remember these people's names and remember the faces as well as trying to understand what's going on in this uh, game. But yeah, hope to see you. Uh, next week Wednesday for part two and remember if you like the video give me a like comment and subscribe to my channel click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos and I will see you next time bye bye